Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladys. Right, so I want you to consider a question here, and I'm interested in your views on this, uh, rather than me just lecturing to you. I'm quite interested to know what your insights are of this. And the question is, what are the right weapons to give complete newbies? Okay, so if you have some relatively fit, relatively strong recruits into your military force, in a time when hand weapons are very prevalent, then what are the right weapons to give them? The reason I ask this is I have noticed over the years of making videos that there is a very um, strongly held, widely held view that if you're an untrained person, then you're somehow better off being equipped with a crude, heavy, sometimes big, simple weapon, a bludgeoning, cleaving weapon, okay? That could be something like a big axe. Uh, very commonly, I see people saying that, oh, it's easier to train people to fight with axes than it is with swords. Surely they're just fighting, and it actually doesn't make an awful lot of difference whether they're holding a sword or an axe. If you're training to fight, then you're training them to fight. Um, but this is a very commonly held view. Things like clubs and maces, things even like uh, big uh, two-handed swords, um, uh, spears, I'm going to put aside for a moment because I, th that's a whole different kettle of fish, but large, heavy, sort of bludgeoning or cleaving weapons. There seems to be this view, whether it's people coming from uh, role-playing backgrounds or even maybe video gaming backgrounds, I don't know. Uh, movies, I think, probably don't help with this, that the, the kind of the henchman the henchman often uses a big heavy weapon and just swings it with abandon. Uh, and it has to be said in some video games, uh, as you know, I've been playing Bannerlord recently. In some video games, uh, two-handed weapons are probably made quicker than they should be. Uh, too heavy, uh, heavy two-handed weapons are made quicker than they should be, um, such that uh, sometimes quicker than little light swords and one-handed swords and stuff, um, such that, yes, indeed, in some video games, it is better beneficial to use the really long heavy weapon because you don't seem to get the same disadvantages in a video game as you do in reality. Now, what I will say before I sort of open this up to your comments and thoughts on this subject is that my experience is somewhat different from this. Um, so without a shadow of a doubt, and this is where we bring spears into it again, without a shadow of a doubt, I have found that if you're doing melees, you know, skirmishing, this kind of stuff, group fighting, or if you're doing one-on-one -on -one fighting, if you have someone who basically is relatively new, relatively untrained, or might just be someone who just isn't very good, if you want, if you can give them any weapon, aside from missile weapons, okay, hand-to-hand -hand weapons, if you can give them any weapon and you want them to stand a good chance of actually beating someone who's pretty good with a sword, for example, then you give them a spear, okay? Now, obviously, if the good, if the good competent trained person has a spear and the new person has a spear, still the good competent trained person's gonna have an advantage. But if the person who's very good and competent has a sword and you give the relatively untrained person or perhaps even completely untrained person, or maybe with like five minutes training, if you give them a spear, they will stand a chance against the person with the sword. And that's one of the points I've always made about spears is if you want to have a group of, you know, a militia, a group of fighting people and you want to have, the, have them stand any chance against another fighting force, give them pole weapons. Fundamentally, uh, because they're very easy to use uh, on, on their base level, okay? You just get them to stand together, to stick together, not run away, not turn their backs, uh, to get their pole weapons out and to frantically just stab at the enemy, okay? You don't really need to teach them specifically how to defend to begin with, um, and there's not many ways of attacking and there's not much skill required to attacking if anybody, anybody who's able to do that is able to stab with a spear. Okay, not necessarily true with a thing like a sword or even an axe, uh, where swinging it and cutting effectively mm, sometimes requires some degree of at least getting the edge pointing in the right direction and knowing how to swing the thing, having the strength to swing the thing, this kind of stuff. Now, this is where my objection uh, lies with giving your, if you imagine you've got your, your noobs, your, your completely inexperienced militia, giving them things like this Danax or perhaps the bill, not a great example, but perhaps the two-handed sword or a heavy mace or something like this. The problem is, against a trained opponent, what you've given them now is a weapon which doesn't have a great reach advantage, is not particularly quick to manoeuvre, 
is not particularly easy to, to swing around, okay? And also, particularly if we come back to the speed point, Gibbs, in terms of the initial speed of swing, might not be bad, but in terms of the recovery and perhaps a following up attack or perhaps defending themselves, is really quite a difficult object to do that with. Now, if you take um, two skilled people and one has, say, for example, a Danax or um, the Zweihander, and the other skilled person has, I mean, I'll just pick one at random, I'll pick a Spadroon as an extreme example. The other has a pretty light and nimble sword. The problem at that point, assuming neither person is armoured, okay, obviously armour changes it, but assuming neither person is armoured, what you've does, done is you've given the skilled person who understands timing and distance and which targets, uh, you know, the fact that they can snipe the hands, the fact that they can countercut, the fact that they can close in and block and grab grapple that person's weapon, you've given them a lot of opportunities against the person who's got the large, relatively slow and relatively difficult to manoeuvre two-handed weapon. Now, the person who's got the larger, heavier weapon might have a reach advantage, possibly, although that might be a reach advantage to the head, it might not be a reach advantage when it comes to the hands, because if we measure the sword from there to the lead hand, you might find that you can snipe the uh, larger weapon user's hands. Not so much true when we're talking about swords with handguards and a lot of blade in front of the hand, but anyway, pole arms definitely. Um, but what you've done is you've given weaknesses to the person with this. And I feel that if you're giving someone who's relatively untrained or inexperienced, not particularly strong or fit maybe, if you're giving them this sort of weapon, you're kind of playing to their weaknesses rather than playing to their strengths. Now the funny thing is, is if you take something, I'll take this padroon again, it could be a rapier, it could be an arming sword, it doesn't really matter. But if you give a person who's relatively untrained one of these, it's easy for anyone of average strength to move one of these around really, really quickly, okay? And in my experience, people who don't really know what they're doing, when you attack them, they'll often attack into the attack, okay? Now, if I'm attacked and I'm a newbie, often they'll flinch slightly and often they'll just go like this. And it's very common, and it's actually very challenging when you're fencing with equal weapons against a complete newbie who just attacks into an attack. What you have to do very often is feint. So you tempt their attack, you deal with their attack, and then you hit them on the riposte. But uh, what the newbie can do is they've got the ability to move this thing quickly and easily and they don't need to, they might not do a very effective um, hit on you, but they might relatively easy get the point or the edge into you or hit some part of you as you're trying to attack them. So they're actually quite dangerous because they can move the thing around quickly. Now, if they're a newbie who doesn't really know what they're doing, they can't do that so easily with the big, heavier, kind of cruder weapon, especially when people are talking things like wood chopping axes, which don't have a reach advantage over a sword. They're just slower and more cumbersome. And yes, they hit with more energy, but the inexperienced person's probably not going to get the chance to hit with them. Um, because on the moment that they start to be attacked, they might start to attack back, but their weapon's much, much slower. So they're going to end up skewered or their hands chopped off before their weapon ever comes to its full attack. So, you might disagree with that. So post underneath, I'm very interested to know your views. What do you, apart from spears, okay, because we all agree, I think we probably all agree, that spears and pikes, long pole arms, simple pole arms, are a very good thing to give to complete noobs. But in terms of slightly shorter, you know, more side arms, and so weapons that are of a person's height or shorter, what do you think are the weapons that actually, in video games or in movies, TV shows, whatever, that these inexperienced people should be equipped with? What would you arm them with? Um, and, uh, you know, it has to be something that they can move easily, that if they just flail around and do any old thing, they are possibly going to actually wound the more experienced and more highly trained opponents with. We could even say, if we bring shields into the equation, I personally would say if I had, uh, apart from spears of course, but as in terms of sidearms, I would just give swords and shields to my relatively untrained people and just say, look, stay behind the shield and stab with the, sh with the sword. <laughs> Take the Roman approach, because that's simple, and actually they stand a much better chance of staying alive for longer with a big old shield 
um, and they're much more likely to wound trained opponents that way as well. Anyway, interested to hear your views, post underneath and um, I will uh, be interested to um, see what you say and respond to some of these. Maybe it will give me some new ideas and we can explore that in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.